it's um, it's been it's been a few years that I've been, I've been promising Nero to come and visit this amazing place, and uh, it's uh, only thanks to the wellness summit and my uh, daughter Irene uh, that uh, that I finally got here. So thank you both very much. We use techno gym equipment in all our hotels, so that's another reason for me wanting uh, to come here. Um, ever since I arrived yesterday, um, people kept coming up to me and saying to me, I think I know you, and oh, I think we know you. And uh, I would say, oh, yes. And they say, yes, aren't you Irene Forte's dad? <laughs> so, so it's rather wonderful being uh, so closely connected to such a well-known person. Uh, speaking about family interaction and business is something uh, I could write several books about, but I only have a few minutes today. Um, I'm in the unusual position uh, to have worked with my father in the business that he founded and to work with my children in the business that I have founded. So I have experience of both sides of the equation. The founder of a business uh, which becomes successful Develop, develops into a very powerful figure in that business. This was particularly true of my father, who created a business which employed 100,000 people. He had a huge reputation in the UK, where he became a member of the House of Lords. And in Italy, he was seen as a fine example of an Italian emigre who had done, done honor to his country abroad. Whilst Trust House 40 was no longer a family business as such, as the family at the end only had 6% of the shares. My father was all powerful. When I became chief executive uh, under his chairmanship, uh, and I wanted to change something, uh, the executive team would say, well, that's what he wants to do, but what does the old man want to do? Very difficult. The uh, my, my own business is more modest in size compared to the one my father developed, but my family has 77% of the shares, and I have control. Uh, my reputation outside the company is a, a good one, and I'm uh, particularly respected as the comeback kid, well, kid no longer, comeback kid after the hostile taker, takeover of Trust House 40, as well as for creating a hotel company in the luxury sphere, which is unique and successful. I'm very powerful within my own company, and I'm treated as the founder with genuine affection and respect by the people who work in it. The founder of a business is also a long-term employee. He's not there uh, on a five-year stint as chief executive. Um, I have I've already been in charge of Rocker 40 Hotels for 21 years. My father was in charge of his businesses for over 50 years. So you are a permanent feature of the business. This is good in that uh, you take a long-term view, you really take decisions for, sh for short-term gain, and you give the business the continuity and the culture which is particularly important in the service environment. But conversely, you can become very entrenched and stop things moving forward as a result. People become afraid to challenge uh, your point of view, and this, of course, is very bad for the business. I developed a passion uh, for the in this industry, working my father's business during my school and university holidays. And I, I did most of the jobs uh, involved in restaurants and hotels, including washing up uh, and being a chambermaid, the two hardest jobs at the bottom end. And in fact, whenever I visit one of my hotels, I always make a point of going to see the washer-uppers and the chambermaids. Um, my children have done the same during their school and university holidays. They all have good degrees from good universities, are hardworking, entrepreneurial, and so have the capability to do well. Um, whilst at university, and then during my chartered accountancy days, I couldn't wait to join my father's business. In fact, I hated my three years of chartered accountancy, but very, the most boring time of my life, but very useful. My children, uh, similarly, all asked to join my business without any pressure from me. 
although I was, of course, very pleased that they did. And since joining, they've immersed themselves in it with a great deal of enthusiasm and passion. I had a very good relationship with my father, and I loved him uh, very much. We trusted each other and could therefore talk about the business with each other in a way that wasn't possible uh, with anyone else. The same goes for my children. But my father was reluctant to give me responsibility early on because he was afraid I would make mistakes and bugger it all up. Uh, when I did get responsibility, it was at a very high level, and the mistakes I could make were very large indeed. With my children, uh, therefore, I've given them areas of responsibility where they, where they could feel empowered uh, very early on. Irene, who is here with me today, um, and who you know better than me, uh, is now Director of Wellness and has, has much greater knowledge and enthusiasm of this area than anyone else in the company. She developed an early interest in training and spas and effectively improved both uh, within the company. She created a spa and wellness philosophy and policy where there was none before. Lydia, her elder sister, has just become Director of Food and Beverage. And again, in her work, um, both outside and inside the company, um, uh, she has developed a knowledge and skill in this area, which is better than most. My son Charles is the youngest and who has recently joined the company and is three and five years uh, younger, respectively, than his two sisters, has become an important part of the development team. Apart from the very selfish pleasure of continuing to see my children all the time, even after they've left home, and being able to have something in common other than the family, the business, uh, they also add a great deal of value to the company. They bring a freshness and energy, a new sense of style. In PR um, terms, they bring uh, a new dimension. And of course, they understand all the technology development that's taking place much better than me. They're not afraid of telling me what they think and provide, and also provide very importantly, uh, the idea of continuity uh, for the business after me and into the future. As son or children of the founder of a business, you're treated with caution by other employees, and I suppose with kid gloves. And that is why it's useful for them to work outside for other organizations for a period of time. They are, of course, respected for who they are, but all important is for them to earn respect for what they are. This you do by hard work, diligence, and by being a member of the team. You have a direct line to the top of the business, but must not, you mustn't use this to throw your weight around. And my children have never done this, and neither did I, and the people in the business respect them for what they offer and call for their help and enjoy working with them. Obviously, we don't agree about everything. They look at things through the eyes of millenniums, which, uh, whilst we have plenty of customers uh, uh, in our hotels uh, who are as old as me, so sometimes their enthusiasm has to be tempered. I'm happy to debate with them and welcome their advice. In any case, they buy into the general strategy and philosophy of the business, which you will hear from Irene um, later. The only real argument that we have, uh, ha have had is about pay. They all believe that I don't pay them enough. <laughs> so I say to them, well, you think you can get a higher salary somewhere else? Go and get it. <laughs> the, the, a family business, uh, which is what my business has been from the start, as my sister Olga uh, has also been involved from the beginning, is like any other that it depends on attracting high quality and talented people. The danger is that uh, heavy family involvement can put off the right people. We have an excellent uh, and highly talented team working the business who are as committed as we are, and we all work together in a very cooperative manner. I started my career in a much bigger and heavily structured business with multiple shareholders, outside shareholders, and it was a, it was a listed company. Therefore, I understand the disciplines needed uh, to make a business work effectively. 
In my present business, there are many decisions I could take without reference. But I'm always conscious uh, of going through the correct processes and authority levels which a, bus uh, which, which a business I did not control would have to go through. This ensures good discipline in the business and effective communication. I always believe that if you have one outside shareholder, you can't treat the business as your own. And this is certainly true where you have several family members of shareholders who are not involved in the running of the business. The difficulty uh, is always in the handover from one generation to the next. The only time I had significant difficulties uh, or differences with my father was at that time. I think he sacked me three times, and I think I also resigned three times. Uh, but he, I wanted to streamline the business. He wanted to leave it as it was. The founder is always reluctant to stop. My children are very young. Um, I got married very late, uh, and they are still in the process of development. But I hope that my experience with my father will help me when the time comes. And in my case, it is even more complicated because there are three of them, and they're all very ambitious. So we'll have to wait and see. Thank you. So my father focused more on aspects of family business, and so I want to talk a little bit more about generational collaboration, where my siblings and my dad see eye to eye, where we might not see eye to eye so much, and where we believe our younger approach has brought a fresher um, element to the business. As my father mentioned, we share the same business values. These values were passed on from my grandfather onto my father and onto us. The most important value for us is really looking after our people. My father touched upon the importance of attracting high quality people. In order to do so, we have always tried to treat our people as part of our family, given that it's a family business. If our team are happy, we know that we're doing our job correctly. The second most important value for us, which doesn't really work at all without the first, is teaching our people to look after our guests and treat them really as individuals. We don't want robots, we don't want our people to have a script, but rather we want their natural personalities to really shine through and for them to listen, anticipate and adapt to all the needs of every, each and every guest. Our third most important value is having hotels that offer the best possible experience of the location that they are in, that are really truly part of the fabric of their location. We don't do cookie cutter hotels. Each of our hotels is unique and truly individual. And having these shared values has really made generational collaboration possible. Of course, there's one or two things where my, father, where my siblings and I really disagree with my father on. My dad cannot stand sharing plates. And to my sister's dismay, every new concept that she puts forward, because she says that millennials like to eat with sharing plates, my dad does not agree. And she still hasn't got a restaurant with sharing plates. <laughs> In hotel development, my brother, of course, pushes for new trendy luxury destinations, such as Mykonos and Ibiza. Unfortunately, my dad still doesn't really understand how these are luxury yet, even though he's never been. <laughs> In spa projects, dad always believes that the thing to have is a lap pool. I think it's because he likes to train for triathlons and things in the pool. Whilst I agree that this is a wonderful luxury, we strongly, strongly disagree when there is only space for a lap pool over other spa facilities. More recently, in sm some smaller hotel projects, Dad has wanted to push for a few extra rooms or a kids' club over a proper spa. Whilst I got my way in the end, this was a little battle. Either way, the special thing about generational collaboration is that we can bring fresh eyes and a more millennial-friendly and future-focused approach to the business with the support and grounding expertise of my father and my aunt. 
We may always need his approval before moving forward with, forward with an idea, and he may have wanted us to focus on something else rather than this, but our Father has always empowered us to bring our ideas to life, many of which we believe, of course, have helped us adapt to the changing needs of younger generations and changing times. So this is what all this is. Sorry, it's actually an old presentation, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to share a few examples of what we've done just to show what I think we can bring to the table. Um, rather than talking the, about the obvious such as social media and technology, I thought I would talk a little bit about Map My Future. I mentioned this two years ago in Austria, so I'm sorry to repeat myself. But as you know, in today's landscape, attracting and retaining high quality people is particularly challenging. Approximately 35% of the hospitality workforce is under the age of 25. And with an understanding of the needs of this younger generation, I was able to build something for them. Map My Future is a smartphone application and an HR management system that enables our employees to access a career map which shows them all the possible career paths um, that they need to take beyond their current role at Rocco Forte Hotels and the training they need to progress. It allows them to set career goals, access relevant online training, and receive job advice from specially trained career coaches 24 hours a day. They are instantly recognized for their success via the inbuilt point system, and they track their progress via the homepage. They also have access to a newsfeed style, a Facebook style newsfeed, and there's also a wellness section on the app. I now wanted to touch a little bit on Rocco Forte Wellness. My dad has always lived a well life. He's 73, and he definitely doesn't look it. He's done eight London marathons, triathlons for Great Britain for his age group, Ironman, an Ironman for his age group qualifying for the World Championships. As a result, he's always seen the importance of having um, really good gyms with the latest, of course, techno gym equipment in our hotels. However, spas have always been a bit of an afterthought. And until recently, he didn't really know what wellness meant, but we got him here, so I think that's the important thing. <laughs> um, for my generation, as I mentioned two years ago, wellness is a daily active pursuit. And in 2015, I launched Rocco Forte Spas to try and meet the needs of my generation. This has now been developed further into Rocco Forte Wellness, which is launching soon. And this has really been created with my generation in mind, but also from what I have learned from all of you over the past few years. Rocco Forte Wellness addresses complete enrichment and unity of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health with Rocco Forte spas, nourish, fitness, mind, community, and sustainability. Last but not least, I wanted to touch upon a Rene Forte skincare. The line was debuted in 2015 for Rocco Forte Spas under, name, under the name of Forte Organics and sees a full-scale relaunch next month with my name, which was possibly an area of disagreement too. <laughs> A Rene Forte skincare is inspired by Sissy and made by hand in Italy. It is the Mediterranean diet for your skin. Each product has been carefully formulated with a matrix of natural active ingredients that come from our organic farm in Sicily at Verdura Resort. The line is vegan, clean, and sustainable from production to packaging. Our spa at Hotel de la Ville, our newest hotel opening in Rome next year, will be its first proper showcase. The line is also going into all the rooms, uh, into third-party retailers, and has a dedicated e-commerce platform. The launch of this line, I think, shows how a new generation can diversify business, hopefully successfully. It's an extension of our family business and shows how the younger generation is developing the business into new areas. To conclude, for family businesses to work, and uh, I think the really important thing is for the foundations of having the same, the foundations of having the same business values are key. I think secondly, it's incredibly important for both generations to have really a mutual respect for one another. 
The older needs to be able to listen to new ideas and be open to change. The younger needs to learn, listen, and I think also know who's boss. <laughs> Communication is also key. Family businesses and gen generational collaboration are not always easy. As my father mentioned, my grandfather sacked him three times, and he resigned three times. And my ride hasn't always been plain sailing. I have to work hard, negotiate, and often fight for what I believe in. I have also threatened to leave one or two times. <laughs> and he has told me to leave then on all those occasions. <laughs> But I'm still here. <laughs> and given that I never get the opportunity to say this, or I never have, I wanted to say how immensely proud I am of my father and what he has achieved. <laughs> After the hostile takeover battle and losing his father's business, the comeback kid bounced back the very next day and started working on a new hotel chain, something that I don't think many people could have ever done at the age of 52. Um, he's so incredibly driven, dedicated, and passionate about what he does, and I'm very proud to say I work with him, with my family, and for Rocco Forte Hotels.